between am I going to be able to withstand poisons more or am I going to be able to balance across a type rope, uh, tight rope a little bit more. So I'm going to let my character have just a little more of kick in constitution and I'm going to give my last stat to my dexterity. Now, this is going to add, uh, D&D Beyond is going to add all these things together. And then when we go over to our character sheet, this is what we get. Now, I'm going to take a second to not only explain, but to also demonstrate the important things that we'll be seeing on the page here. So immediately across the top, these are all of my stats. Now you'll notice these plus twos, plus ones, and minus one. These are what are known as ability modifiers. Ability modifiers are important in when a dungeon master asks us to roll for a certain stat when we want to do a specific task. An example of this. I am playing just in case, and I tell the dungeon master that I want to break the door down with my shield in order to uh, break the lock. The dungeon master is then going to tell me that I need to roll my d20 and I need to add my strength modifier uh, to my roll. Now, You'll see that I have no dice physically on my person. But the great thing about D&D Beyond is that all I have to do is take my mouse, go over to my strength modifier, and then I click it. And then D&D Beyond actually does all the math for me from my roll. So I got, I rolled a 14 and I add my strength modifier and I got a 16 total. With this 16, the dungeon master is now going to tell me what the result of that roll means. If he wants to be a little generous, maybe I kick the door down, uh, I knock the door so hard it flies off the hinges, or maybe the dungeon master has this door really, really secured so that my, me knocking it with my shield meant nothing. It's up to the dungeon master to decide. And this applies to all these numbers up here. Say I uh, want to see if my character remembers some major important history event. Well then, he's going to ask me, roll a d20 and add your history uh, skill. But history is not up in these six stats. However, it is down here in my skill box. So I'm gonna look through my skills box and I find history. Now, you may be thinking, there's a negative one on history, but where is that coming from? Well, history is an intelligence stat so I have to go over to my intelligence stat and the modifier is a negative one. So my history by default is a negative one. All these little three word, three letter, uh, what do you want to say this? Words maybe are describing what statistic these skills are tied to. So Acrobatics are tied to your dexterity, while athletics are tied to your strength. That's why there's a difference in plus two and plus one. So I roll my history check. Again, all I have to do is click the number, and then D&D Beyond automatically does the roll for me. This is why D&D Beyond is so great. It's free, and it gives you all the tools that you are going to to need in order to create your first character and play along. And say you need to roll more dice other than just a d20. Well, there's a nice little symbol down here on the bottom left 
where it allows me to roll any kind of dice that I want. And not only that, but it can let me select the quantity of the dice. I'm gonna move this over here. So let's say I am rolling for damage and my weapon requires that I roll two D4. So D4 means I'm going to roll a die that has four sides on it. And that's the one that looks like a pyramid. So I click it once and then I can click it again. So now it's going to roll two D4s. Program automatically does it. And right there is my total. So again, I did without having to spend a single cent I can do all of this. Now, that's, that's statistics, that's skills. Now, these things are most in, useful when you are role playing, interacting with other characters or interacting with the world. But what about when you are fighting? What do we use then? Well, we're gonna go over to the things that say initiative and armor class. Armor class refers to how hard are you to hit. The way that it attacks work in D&D is that someone says, I want to attack this target. The person then is going to roll their 20-sided die, the D20, add any number that they have to, add those two numbers together, and then they compare it to the armor class of their so said target. So if I want to use, for example, my talons to attack uh, an enemy in front of me, what I am going to do is I would, if I had physical dice, I would roll the, the 20 sided die, add this hit plus four number, and then add them together. Ooh, that's a very low hit. Now, uh, depending on how friendly the dungeon master is being, or depending on how uh, strong your opponent is, my the number that I have needs to surpass the armor class of my target. If it's below the, uh, the armor class of the target, it's not going to hit. And the same applies to the character just in case, which is our Eric Cocker here. If anyone wants to hit me, they need to surpass an 11 in order to do damage. If someone does pass the armor class, then they start rolling for your damage. So let's say the opponent that I'm fighting has an armor class of four. Well, my five just makes it. So now I can roll for damage. So again, I just click that, uh, the damage slot, and it does the calculations immediately for me. Now, how do we determine who gets to attack first, though? Well, that's where this little number comes into play. This is what's known as your initiative. Initiative is used in determining a battle order because Dungeons and Dragons battling is turn-based combat, meaning everyone is going to be ranked from highest number to lowest number who is going to go first. All I would have to do is roll my d20, add my initiative. And with that, I rolled an 8. Anyone who rolled higher than an 8 is going to go before me. Anyone who rolled lower than an 8 is going to go after me. Now, there's this other stat right here, walking speed. This is how we determine how far we are able to go in a couple seconds. Typically, uh, this speed means that I am able 
to go as far as 25 feet within six seconds. But it can always, uh, the amount of time that it takes can vary between DM. So if I'm in the middle of battle and I want to move, I can move no more than 25 feet. But I am able to go less than that. I, but I just cannot extend it. it. I cannot exceed it. Hit points are how much health you have. So hit points, I'm at an 11 right now. Proficiency bonus refers to a special stat that I get to add on to any sort of skill that I'm proficient in. So if I was proficient in medicine and investigation, my medicine would, would be my plus two plus my proficiency. So that's a plus four. And then my investigation, instead of being a minus one, would be a plus one. And that's because I, we added the proficiency bonus. Oh, I'm not trying to change my hit points. And D&D Beyond also makes it possible to keep track of your health. And by clicking it, I am able to take away as many health points as I need to. And this is for this sheet of paper can always be changing because as you play with your character more, your character grows and they start getting even more attributes to their class. So that's D and D beyond. I'm going to type that one into the chat here if I can find it and chat. And so that is D and D beyond dot com and again it's free to it's free to create an account yes ashley oh sorry i was just going to jump in while you were on D, &D beyond because you know I, i'm learning a lot from the chat as well as from what you're saying so mm -hmm. am i right in thinking i think matthew answered my question as you play you can actually increase your stats it's kind of similar to how you would get experience points in, in Pokemon and, and yes. um, like your, your Pokemon would transform or evolve. That's the word evolve. Yes. So yeah, can you explain maybe a little bit about that for everyone? Of course. Cool. So I'm going to go into my character builder and I'm going to go over to my class page. Now, when you first start with a new character, you're always, most often the case, you're going to start at level one. There are some people who will say, oh, you're going to start at level 10, but for this example, we're going to start at level one. So these are the things that I have access to just as level one. Now, as I beat more enemies or uh, uh, get past special story hook moments where the DM says, okay, now you can level up, I am then going to level up one level. Once I do that, I obtain some more attributes. I get what's known as a fighting style. I can get more into spell casting. And my one of my abilities, uh, divine, I finally gain the ability of Divine Smite. So that's level one to level two. In level three, it I gain some more stuff some more stuff again. I so as you continue to level up, you are going to get more and more things. And the way that we determine we determine the things that you're going to get, again, D&D Beyond is going to explain all of it, but you can always refer to the player's handbook. But again, there are enough resources online that you will never have to buy this. You can always just look it up. So that's how leveling up works. Thank you, Matthew, for explaining that to everyone. Awesome. Great. Okay. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Aiden. Go on. You nope, do nope. you. That's, that's fine. So that's a little look into how D&D Beyond works. Now, to specifically mention this specific subject, what about eating? 
what about sleeping? Those are very specific mechanics that are going to be, uh, just gonna stop the screen share for a little bit. Those are mechanics that are determined by your dungeon master. I, for example, whenever I'm a dungeon master, I don't keep track of whether or not my characters are eating. And that's not a, I expect them to tell me that they're eating. That's from me just assuming that as they are traveling, they are always eating. So that's just one less thing that my characters just don't have to worry about. But in regards to sleeping, sleeping is a mechanic that is definitely introduced into uh, Dungeons and Dragons and is very, very important. Because if you don't sleep, you can get certain status effects that hinder what you're able to do. In the case of spell casting, as you use your spells, you can actually run out of how many times you can cast a spell. And the only way to gain the amount of what are known as spell slots, in order to gain those back, you have to actually go to sleep. And depending on what kind of class you play, maybe all you need is a short three hour nap just to like get your bearings again but there are some spells that require that you sleep for at least six hours. And the Dungeon Master does a pretty good job of speeding those things along. If you're just taking a three hour nap, okay, they do it and we move on with our day. But if someone's going to take a six hour nap, maybe the Dungeon Master is gonna take time with everyone else to see what they're gonna be up to while the other person is resting. There are many, many mechanics in D, D that sometimes it's just the dm the dungeon master deciding whether or not to keep track of that stuff or, or but there are also the ones that you just can't deal without so i explained walking uh here's a here's an interesting one that i think i'll also bring up so we were also talked about how we asked to explain how do you search for something. And I'm going to go back to share screening again. Cert looking for stuff breaks down into two particular stats. That is your perception and your investigation. Investigation is often used when you're trying to find something very, very specific. Like maybe you're trying to find evidence that someone was building a fire nearby. At that point, you're going to be investigating because you're looking for specific things. But perception is more just getting a sense of your surroundings. If you wanted to do any of these things, you have to communicate to your dungeon master. I want to have a look around to see uh, what sort of races inside this building that I recognize. The dungeon master will then tell you roll perception and then roll your d20, get your number, add it up. The dungeon master will tell you what you see. Or maybe you're looking for signs of a fight that broke out to, in the middle of a cabin because now everyone's gone. Well, now you're going to look for, now you're investigating. You are trying to find specific signs of a battle. Roll, add it up. The DM tells you what happened. So that is... So that is how character sheets are used in Dungeons and Dragons. And again, the Indie Beyond is free so that you will not have to buy or print anything.
But if you do still prefer having something handheld, you can probably find you can find character sheets and dice at game stores like Dungeons and Donuts in Galway. Short plug. Uh, another service that I want to talk about is uh, the use of maps. Maps are important when in the middle of fights because you need to be able to determine where your character is, where the enemy is, and how far you need to you are able to travel before you get to that enemy. So I'm going to show one of my favorite services. I'm going to start with getting it. I'm going to start setting it up, but I want to kind of open the floor a little bit to any burning questions that any of you might have right now. Good idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, if you want to ask a question. Yes, Adam. Um, so like, you know, Steam. Yes. The online gaming platform. Yeah, do you know there, there's like uh, I downloaded it today because I got a new computer. Yeah. Because I, I was looking at Dungeons and Dragons, a game for it, and it was a free ten gigabyte. I'm yes. like, um, like, how is that? Do you know about it, or I don't really haven't played it yet. I have heard about it, and I just haven't. I I have not played it yet. It is also in my Steam library because I was able to get it for free, and but I just. Haven't had the time to really explore into it. So um, I would definitely recommend uh, that, like, if you do end up, like, playing it and you find that it is a lot of fun, definitely be sure to, like, spread the message about it. And I'll probably start, look at, uh, start looking into it, too. It would be good for, like, the group I thought, maybe. Hmm. Thank you, Frank. Okay. Maybe. Thanks, of course. Adam. Thank you for asking. Awesome. Any other any other questions? You can either write them in the chat or you can ask them. Let's see. Well, mm, I that that I, uh, I just saw a message in chat that brings up an excellent point. Mm -hmm. Um how do you communicate with people online? So mm -hmm. Um, I think, uh, like, uh, so there are many vocal services online that you can use for Dungeons and Dragons. For example, in, uh, I'm in two campaigns where in, in one of them, they, we use Facebook Messenger because it's all my friends that I've known since we were 14. But then we, there's another service called Discord another free service where you can do video and voice chat using dedicated groups and it uses less internet for better quality. So Discord's a good choice. I think I can, uh, I have it on my computer here. I can show you a little bit of what that looks like. As it checks for updates, of course. <laughs> Great timing with the updates. Oh, Discord. it does it. it. It just it just does it every time, and yeah. it's starting up. So yeah. I use uh, Discord a lot to not only can you do private messages, but you can do group chats. Um, at uh, funnily enough, uh, back in May, I introduced Discord to Galway Autism Partnership because. Uh, there was video gaming with Mauricio, and a lot, a, a lot of the kids were starting to push for, hey, can we start using Discord? And so we started getting a group together. Cool. Right, so I'm going to screen share again just to share with you all what Discord is about. All right, here we go. So Discord, as I said, it's a free online voice chatting service. You can have direct messages with any friends that you have, and it's all, uh, you're, it kind of operates like Facebook. If you want to be friends with a certain person, you have to have their specific code, which is a little thing that pops on the little, little left-hand side 
here, please don't look at mine. <laughs> <laughs> but alongside that, so I have all these direct messages, but all these little things on the left here are what are called servers. Servers are dedicated groups where only certain people are in, are in those groups. And the only way to get into those groups is by invitation. So, oh, this one's a good one. Uh, Dungeon Alchemist. I joined this group because Dungeon Alchemist is creating an online uh, Dungeons and Dragons map builder. It costs money, so don't start in, don't, uh, like, you can start looking into it, but keep in mind, something like this is going to cost money, and I was willing to put money into it because I knew it was just going to help me out and would be a great investment. But the only people that can get into this server are people with the link. This, this server has many different text channels. So there's a general chat where you can just chat with people. There's a suggestions, join notifications. And along with text channels, there are voice chat channels. It all depends. Uh, but there can be groups where they don't have voice channels. Let's see, what's another good example here? Um, hmm. Oh, uh, I'm in two Among Us servers. The Among Us, it, for those of you who don't know, is essentially Mafia or Werewolf Online. And uh, I'm in these two groups because I was invited and we, we wanted to get more people to play with and, because I had no one to play with. And these Discord groups can be catered towards whatever you need. So I, there's another group that I'm a part of. I believe it's this one where uh, me and my buddies may started playing Monster Hunter World. This is a, oh, here it is. Nope, that's not it. Where's the one that I'm looking for? Where is my Dungeons and Dragons chat? I oh, have I, saw, one. I saw one. I saw one with the... Yeah, I think it's yeah, this one right that's here. It. Uh, that's That's one of my Dungeons and Dragons servers. So Discord is a great service for this. And I'll stop sharing. And so, yeah, that's that's voice chatting, essentially. Yeah, so I'm... you'll... So already, we if you're going full online, keep in mind, you're going to have, say, your Facebook Messenger or your Discord so that you can chat with people. But then you also have to have another thing open uh, for if you're using D&D &D Beyond to play your character. So mm -hmm. these things start leveling, uh, start layering on top of each other. And we haven't even gotten to the third service that I need, that I want to talk about. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and the, the third service is a map builder. And uh, I'm going to have to screen share again. I'm sorry. This is a lot of screen sharing, a lot of back and forth, but I appreciate uh, everyone's patience. I really appreciate it. So Roll20 is the service that we're now looking at. And Roll20 is not only great for uh, giving you information on specific tools or mechanics or items or spells in D&D, but you can also use it to uh, you can also use it to build maps for your encounters. I'm going to enter this game to show you a little bit what that looks like. It takes a little bit, and depending on what role you play, whether you're the dungeon master or maybe you're the player, the dungeon master is going to be able to fully customize this map in, in order to fit whatever story that he needs to demonstrate. And, oh, I also forgot, dungeon uh, roll 20 also comes with camera and microphone services. But I'm going to pop it off for now because I don't need it. Uh, so I'm just going to zoom out here. So, so Aiden, right. you, you mentioned there that Roll20 comes with camera and microphone. Could you play 
could you, if you were playing online, could you play with Roll20 and D&D Beyond and not need to use Discord or Facebook Messenger or any of the above ones? You can. Okay. I, uh, you can. Uh, cool. I'll, I'll leave it at that. So you'll notice that there is the general map here with all these with all these words. This was a campaign that I started partaking in. I want to say it was midsummer of 2020 because I was bored. I had no D and D campaigns to play in, and I needed a new one, and I wanted to test out this new character. So. All these little buildings, that's the map that the dungeon master was able to put together just by using a bank of resources that he has access to. He's able to just search up specific images that he wants and he just plugs them in. I, as a player, also have an image for my character. My character is right here. I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit. Each player in roll 20 is going to need a, a photo to represent their character so that the dungeon master knows where they are. I, as the player, am able to move this anywhere. And this is how the dungeon master keeps track of the, where my character is. This is also where that that walking speed comes into play. Let's say that my this little red lizard guy, I think it's called a kobold, is the enemy that I need to go fight. Now, typically on the battlefield, each square is about five feet uh, or mm, uh, so is about five feet. Now my character, we're going to use the just in case stats again, and I need to get to my just in case stats. There we go. Let's say we're using just in case. My character's walking speed is 25. So I am going to count by five straight to my enemy to determine how far I'm willing to go. So starting from here, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. I cannot move anymore. And depending on maybe there's something else, maybe there's something that I can do from the back here. Maybe I can cast a spell. Who knows? Maybe I'll try to attack. But if I'm trying to attack him with uh, a, attack this kobold right here, uh, with my sword, I'm not going to be able to do anything because I'm not in range. Maybe I have a bow and arrow. I can I can try to hit him. It, this is where roll 20 comes into play because I'm able to tell where my character is in perspective to all other characters on the map. And again, this is a free service to use for both players and dungeon masters. It takes a little bit of getting used to. I've, I've been trying to rack my brain around this service for quite a number of days, but it just, if you know someone who already knows how to use Roll20, you can easily learn from them. So, let, so there is a chance that you're probably using you could be using three different services, which is what I used to do with this particular group. I had roll 20 so that I had my map and then I had my stats right alongside it. And then I was also using discord at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it all layers up, but this was my affordable way of playing D and D because I just needed to save my, Money and printing is expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great, Aiden. Thank you so much. Like you've, I know it's been a, it was a little bit more detailed and kind of, I suppose, technical, but you've really explained a lot about how to actually play. And I yeah. know, I know, the big question everyone wants to know is, how, when are we going to start playing? So before you guys all joined us, um, myself and Aiden were chatting, and he explained to me how you start when you've never ever played before so basically 
um, GAC, which is the, the charity that I work for, we're going to find some DMs who are available in the community. So we're going to hire DMs and we'll have different groups based on maybe age or experience and different things like that. And then what the DMs are going to do is they're going to invite you to join them probably on a Zoom to start just because it's what we're all used to. And they're going to invite you to join for what's called session zero. That's what Aidan was telling me. And session zero is when you can get together and maybe make your characters or share your characters. You can all have just, it's not like a proper game. It's like a chat where you all get to have an idea of what your characters are, the kind of games that you want to play. You kind of talk about how much battle, how much role play do you want to do? Do you want to play as part of a massive story or in like little short episodes and then you're all going to decide if you want to play on discord if you want to play on zoom if you want to use facebook messenger so i know that sounds like a lot but the most of the work goes comes down to the dm so it'll be the dm's job to get you started so yeah we're going to find some dms and get you started i see that matthew is volunteering Matthew, I'm, yes. definitely gonna, I'm definitely going to talk to you about that <laughs> as later as well, okay? And I had a couple of other people volunteer as well, which is great because we really need the DMs. Without them, we can't play. Um, but yeah, so I think we only have about maybe like 10 minutes late, left, but I think me and Aidan said, like, if you want, guys want to show us, talk a little bit about your characters, tell us a little bit about, like, your experiences, if you have played already, um, ask any questions. I think now is a nice time to do that. What do you think? Oh, I see okay. Helen has a question right yeah, away. That, they, yeah, and that's that's oh, Oshin. Oh, so we're, oh, we'll Oshin, I'm so yeah. sorry. I was going by the nope. name on the... Uh, sorry, Oshin. What's oh, the no question? problem. <laughs> so should I share, share my screen? Do you want to show us your character sheet? Okay. I'll okay, cool. Yeah. This right. is Ooh, my whoa. guy, Brock. This is guy. Brock. He's a he's a male dragon born rogue who's level one. He he's completely greedy. He <laughs> he kills only for gold. As, as rogues typically should. <laughs> yes. Got a merc here. Yeah, he uses a crossbow, a short sword, and a dagger, and and. Uh, he once got a magical glowing crystal, and he's been trying to sell it off. But people, but whatever he does, is he just can't seem to find a buyer. So right. he's been holding on to it, and he's learned a little bit of magic. Cool, but really. Not any that he can actually use quite yet. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good though. I just, love this character. Yeah. Oh, very it's nice out. starting, uh, very nice starting armor class. Yeah, and it sounds yeah. like you'll make a good DM someday with a little bit of experience. You sound pretty creative. So yeah, and that's as well. If people are interested in being DMs, I think with a little bit of practice, you'll be awesome. You know, you can definitely uh, like lead the adventures as well. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Anyone else want to talk to us about their characters or any experience playing? Oh, I see Adam. Go for it, Adam. Um, I tried to log in um to Dungeons and Beyond, but it just says sign in. No, no, just sign in, not create an account or register. Oh, like, do you need there, to create an account Aiden, to to you play? You need yes, you need to create an account in order to use the characters. Uh, use the character builder. I'm very sorry. I should have explained that. No. This it, it, it might say, like, if there's, like, a box telling you to sign in, it might say near the box, like, don't have an account, register now, and you have to click that, and it'll take you to register an account. Yeah. Oh, I, I would, oh, Demand. so if you go to D&D &D Beyond, there's, a like, a black band at the top of the screen, and to the right, it says sign in or register, so that should be... And I always say, if in doubt, ask a grown-up to help out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sometimes you guys know more than the grown-ups. That's definitely true. <laughs> Anyone else? 
Matthew, uh, would you would you like to tell us a little bit? Like, how long have you been playing, Matthew? I want to hear this. Oh, not that like a year, maybe. Yeah. Okay. You're, uh, you you know a lot about it though, so like I think that gives you an example of like how quick you can learn about it. Hmm. Uh, should I share a screen? If you want yeah, to, if, yeah. If you if you want to share your character, yeah. Okay. Um. Yep. Whoa! Wow. This is Marble. Um, I have not figured out their gender yet. That's they okay. Are, uh, they're a they're a human cleric. I decided to give them high armor class because you know cl clerics, clerics are kind of overpowered. They the they like heal, but they pack a punch. Yeah. Um. Oh. Oh, I to I totally forgot to add a big part of this guy's story. Um. Yeah. So anyway, in the in this spell, like, <sighs> damn. So I was supposed to have some necromancy spells in here for the backstory of the character to mm -hmm. be that it's a cleric of the life domain. You promote life, but they were secretly um, dabbling in the dark arts of necromancy. Like, mm. spells like raise the dead. I don't, yes. I don't even need to get those at level one. Anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, those are, I think that one uh, takes a while. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just... Stats. My god, your statistics are through the roof. Did you roll for that? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought so. Uh, uh, and that brings it to an interesting point. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I, when, I, I when you're done... Yeah. I got Sorry? way too lucky. Like, I got way too lucky. I, I should <laughs> I should have got lucky with my other characters so they wouldn't that die all the time. That is completely fine. Uh, and I think that's something that, like, I can explain to every, I can explain to everyone very quickly here. So there are three different ways that you can create your statistics. I already showed you the standard point array. O Oshin uh, shared standard point array as well, I believe. And so in standard point array, all the numbers that you need are going to ensure that you're going to have one really good stat and one really bad stat. Mm. Uh, now. There are two other ways to determine stats. There is rolling for it. And what the, the way that I typically do it, I don't know if other DMs will do this. I, Matthew, I don't even know if you're the one who did the, if you did this too. Uh, typically what I was taught to do is you roll four D6. That's just the standard die. Like if you think of a, if you think of a dice, that's, you just roll the D6. You roll four d six, and you take and you drop the lowest uh, of those four, and you just add up the highest three. So let's see what. So, so yeah. see, I was rolling stats here. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, there's a couple of things in the way, but I think I see a two. I saw a two there. Yeah. I so, see. Yeah, I see yeah, a two yeah, there's, and there's a four one. and two fours. So, 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 I, so I, I would drop the one and add the two, the four, and the four up together. Mm -hmm. to um and put it into a certain stat like say strength so you know ten. so i'd have 10 strength which is I, i'd be a weak man <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but also this is a good demonstration of another thing where it's like it's important for dms to be firm but also like flexible because i know dms where they would see that one that you rolled matthew and they would ask you to roll that number again. Because Wait, that, uh, the reason why is because it's kind of unfair to just have a one. But again, it's always up to the DM. There are DMs that are going to say, no, the four that you roll, you must choose from those. But I also know a DM who is a good buddy of mine who I'm playing with right now, where mm -hmm. he encouraged all of us. Uh, if you roll a one, roll it again. And just pick from there and there are chances where you're gonna get all six stats very low but there are gonna be moments like matthew has demonstrated here and you just become a god <laughs> <laughs> and in my impossible to hit and a level one cleric hey i have a i have a level one monk who is like 
who is also impossible to hit and just absolutely demolishes. <laughs> oh, and Aiden and, and Matthew as well. What was what? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I was going to oh, ask yeah. um, if, if you have like a super nice, like encouraging DM, can they help you to level up? Like, can they like, you know, say, okay, I've created an adventure where you all defeated a giant monster together and you all, everyone levels up. Like, or mm -hmm. does, does that happen? That, 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 yes. that depends on the type of game you're playing in. So there's two, there's two types of games. There's a XP game in which you get XP for uh, usually just killing monsters, but sometimes completing quests and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's milestone. So if the if the adventuring party reaches a certain point in the story, like uh, let's say you like... killed the dragon that was terrorizing the town or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. you'd all level up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, awesome. It sounds like but, so much uh, fun. <laughs> if you're playing, if you're uh... It depends on who you're playing with. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like a good DM will help you with leveling up. Like they'll help you remember because uh, they'll help you remember certain things when you're leveling up. Like every time you level up, you have to uh, like your your health goes up too. So they help you remember. Hey, these are the die that these are the dice that you have to roll now. And this is the stat that you have to add to it. Okay. So they should always be trying to constantly help the players understand the mechanics. And they're like, yes, there's a moment where it's like, we've gone over this before, this is how you do it. But hey, sometimes like when things like increasing your health happen rarely, depending on who, how your 